Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, episode 13. We're back after about a four-month hiatus, and I'm really glad to be doing these again. So today we're going to talk about using the database SQL package. Uh, this is a standard library package. It's a very powerful way to deal with a huge number of different popular SQL databases. So we're going to talk about basics and how to use the package very briefly, and then as we always do, we're going to jump right into the example code. So first of all, let's head over to the docs for package SQL. Uh, you can see the description here, it's pretty generic, uh, but the basic thing here is that um, you will interact a lot with this DB type. So you, generally speaking, you'll open a database using a specific driver and data source. So today we're going to be using SQLite and an in-memory database, uh, but you can imagine there's support here for MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and many more. Uh, and then we'll see today some usage of this exec function and the query row function. And the concepts we learn from there will translate uh, across the board to things like prepared statements here, uh, transactions over here, and also you'll be able to extrapolate some things and figure out how to use some of uh, these tuning parameters here. So let's jump right into the code, as we always do. And we'll focus a little bit uh, on some of these imports. So you can see the standard library imports, fairly straightforward. You can see an import here. This is to access some of the data models that we defined and then operations on those data models. And then this one's important. This is an anonymous import, which tells the SQLite package to register itself as a driver in the SQL database, excuse me, in the SQL package. Um, so that means that once we go down here onto line uh, 18, you can see that when we call sql.open, passing in SQLite3 as the first parameter and colon memory as the second parameter, because we made this anonymous import, the database SQL library will know what to do and will know to defer to the SQLite3 library, which in turn will open up an in-memory database. So once we do that, we simply call our models function to create a table, then we create a new person, we read that person, update the person, and delete the person. So that's the create, read, update, and delete, or CRUD, that we always hear about. So let's go right into our models, and you'll see we have a pretty simple struct here which we're using to represent a single row in the database. It has a first name, last name, and age. Creating that person's table is pretty straightforward. We just call that dbexec function, db.exec and we just create the table with the right name and the right column names. And then here's where the interesting parts are. Here, for example, is the create person functionality. The important thing here is that we're calling db exec, but we're passing in these question marks. And these question marks will be handled by the database library, by database SQL, um, and it will convert these parameters in a SQL safe way uh, into the query and it will ensure things like SQL injection attacks don't happen. But we're going to look at a uh, pretty much more advanced function here to teach you some of the lessons you'll need to know uh, to go forth and use the library to its more full potential. So here we're doing a read. We're going to read a person from this database that has the first name, last name, and age. So those are the things that we're going to call a selector. And then assuming everything went right, we're going to write the resultant person into this result. Again, because it's a pointer to a person, we can write data into it as if it was a return value. So here we do our query. Again, we've got this, uh, this database statement, and we let the database driver handle uh, substituting in the values, in this case, first name for this question mark, last name for this question mark, and so on and so forth. Once we do query row, we get a single database row back. We can call scan on the row, and we can write the columns in order into these variables. So the first name, last name, and age. And if you remember how we created the table, those are the columns in order. Assuming nothing went wrong, then we can take those values and write them right into result.firstName, last name, and age. And then we return nothing. So let's see this in action. I already built this because it takes a little bit of time to build because of the SQLite library. So let's just run it. So we ran it, and all the logs that we expect to get on a successful operations on the database get logged. So you can see we created a representation of me in the database, and we tried to read me back out of the database. We updated me, 
and we deleted me from the database, and then all was well. And you can see we got an exit code of zero. So that's it for today. Uh, I encourage you to go check out the code on GitHub as always. Uh, I encourage you also to read the documentation in the database SQL Go doc. There's a ton of great examples. Uh, there's a ton of good documentation. And using this example with the CRUD functionality on the database will really allow you to extrapolate and do some much more advanced functionality on the database. So that's all for today. Uh, I'm really glad to be back after the hiatus, and we'll see you guys soon. Take care.